Welcome to another episode of Modern Art Blitz, our 40th episode speaking in tongues about art that you might enjoy. The art world is a vast cosmos, and we're just a little speck of dust floating around the sun. Here this I'm is my co-host. Her name is Lisa Derrick. We stream live at dronebox.com every Sunday? Pretty much every Sunday. Almost every Sunday. When there's not a technical difficulty. Or a bike race. Oh man, don't get me started. <laughs> the, the bikes block the streets uh, today. <laughs> Our guest today, uh, we have two guests later in the show, will be painter Winnie Brewer. Very excited to have Winnie on, but I'm actually super excited right now about our present guest. Our first guest today is, now do we call you the director? Curator of exhibitions. Curator of exhibitions. Ooh. That's actually the fun job. Yeah. <laughs> Director, you got to sit there and bum money off people. It's like standing out in front of a 7-Eleven, you know? So it's, yeah. it's a curator. You just got to have all you. This is, this is the fun. guy with all the fun stuff. This is Edward Hayes. And uh, he is the curator of exhibitions at Mola'a. Can I say that? <laughs> Museum, is Museum of Latin American Art. That's it. And located in? Long Beach. Downtown Long Beach, correct? Downtown Long Beach. Beautiful downtown. Near, near the Queen Mary? Yes, a uh, stone's throw. We're on a stone's throw. If you throw a stone at the <laughs> Queen Mary, it might sink, right? <laughs> I hear it's not in it's, too good a yeah, shape. It's you pretty know. funny, actually. They're not, they're not really... Don't want to rock the boat over there. No, oh, 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 don't get them, don't get them, yeah. get them involved in the city yeah. politics. Okay, okay, sorry, man, sorry. <laughs> so, hey, um, so tell us, uh, where did you get your start? As I mean, curating seems like this... this Mysterious art, how does one become a curator? How does one become a curator? I don't know. Oh. <laughs> well, did you I don't know how it happened. I couldn't tell you, I couldn't replicate the, the path here. Was there, was there an academic path? Uh, at some point, yeah, there, ha there had to be an academic element. Um, I, I've always been drawing and painting my whole life. I Where are you from? To, uh, I grew up in San Antonio, Texas. Okay. Yeah, but I went to art school in Chicago, did painting, loved it, had a little, um, a uh, little side trip in Mexico, played minor league baseball, came back, uh, decided to get back on, on the art track and went to uh, uh, UT San Antonio to study art history, uh, modern and contemporary Latin, Latin American art there. Did, did you face anybody in the minors that is now in the majors? Uh, at that time, no. A couple of pitchers that I had uh, practiced with, yes, made it to the Mets. And really? Uh, Who? Uh, let's see here. Um, uh, let's see. Rodriguez, I forget his first name. The names are um, not coming to me today. No, no, it's all good. It's all good. He comes here to talk about art, and I want to talk about baseball. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I love so, to talk about baseball. And can I, can, we, can I just say that I'm a little sad today that the Dodgers lost last night. Got clobbered by the Cubs last night. And, and wow. here we are. Here's the best part. We're starting this at 5 o'clock when the Dodger game is starting. Like, nobody in L.A. is watching us, right? Or anybody <laughs> watching us is like, why are they talking about sports? Everybody on the planet is watching that game. And I love that you're wearing Angels colors and you're wearing Dodger colors. Yep. I, I am wearing awesome. Yes, this is. Wait, okay, no, but you're from Texas, so, yeah. so, so your loyalties lie with... Did you, you moved here and now you're a Dodger fan? Is no, that, I've, I've been a lifelong Cincinnati Reds fan. Oh, wow. I, I root for the Dodgers now, but I'm a lifelong, a lifelong Reds fan. My father grew up in rural Ohio, so oh, okay. he, he was a big Reds fan. So, so how did you end up um, a curator? How did you end up at the yeah. at the museum? Well, I had a, I had a good experience in Chicago, uh, working in museum education at the Art Institute of Chicago. I realized that I loved working uh, with people, loved talking about the objects that were there, connecting one on one, um, doing the big groups, and, and yeah, I thought that, I found that I found that really exciting and. Um, yeah, over time, some opportunities came up, and I started working for the McNay Art Museum after grad school, after, after the art history, worked for the McNay Art Museum in San Antonio, uh, and, you know, worked heavily with the, um, the contemporary art program in there. I worked for the chief curator, 
uh, Rene Barrio, and yeah, I think I learned everything from Rene. And the McNair, do they have like a Western collection in addition to no. like a contemporary program, or is it just? It's you know, it's a really uh, that was museum. a Texas stereotype on my part. <laughs> <laughs> There's Western art everywhere, uh, and I think I think there may be a Remington or two in the uh -oh. collection. Oh, that's, yeah. that's there a may be a bronze or two. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, they, they have a world class kind of collection. They have, uh, I mean, I saw uh, Picasso, Monet. Um, you know uh, the, the founding collection there is incredible. The the the, res the owner of the residence, um, I mean, she had this like world class collection uh, from you know t and throughout the, throughout the twenties and thirties. She was just amassing uh, really beautiful works of art, and yeah, gave gave this gave the museum uh, to the city, made it public in nineteen fifty, uh, and then later on they kind of ramped up uh, vamped up a uh, contemporary art program. And, and so you worked contemporary there, and then you you got the job at MOLA. Yes, yes, an, an, open, an opening came up out here in, in Long Beach, and um, it was a chance to work directly with modern and contemporary Latin American art. I mean, the mission of the museum is to, uh, is, ex is exactly that. So, uh, yeah, I, I moved out here three years ago and decided this is what I want to do. And that is yeah. awesome. So you didn't take specifically a, a master's program in curation. This came out of your background in art history and mm -hmm. your love of art and your own artwork. Yes, absolutely. Yes, definitely. And I'd say, and I think I'll, I'll share it, whatever. Um, I, I've only taken one curatorial class. Wow. And I failed it. Wow. Really? Yes. Well, that's, but that's, you know, <laughs> uh, I think that that may, there are so many people in academia who pass, who only go on to mediocrity. Maybe the failures are actually the successes. And how can you, how did you fail it? I, I, I turned in this really crum crummy proposal. I mean, I was too busy making art. I was an artist at the time. I was 100%. That's what I was doing in the studio. And Michael Ryan, who he was working at the time with um, the student galleries, and he was teaching this course. And uh, I, was, I was heartbroken. I, and I wanted to make it up to Michael. Uh, and he gave me an opportunity that summer to redo, redo the project. Uh -huh. um, so uh, thank you, Michael X. Ryan, it, if you're watching. It's kind of bragging rights, really, <laughs> yeah, when you think I, about I, it. I, so. <laughs> So, so we're looking uh, back here at a, uh, a, a photo that you supplied. Tell us about this photo. This is at yeah. the museum, oh. right? This is at a space called a collaborative. And we had this arrangement with the space downtown for, it was a five year deal. Uh, we don't have it anymore, but I'm really fortunate. I was fortunate to, to organize a show. My first show for the museum, at, museum actually, it was called Distant Parallels. And I got a chance to pull uh, f uh, five artists working in LA, young emergent, you know, emerging Chicano, Latino, mm -hmm. Latin American artists. So that image we, that's up there right now, that's uh, Ramiro Gomez Jr., who mm -hmm. since then is kind of, you know, he's blown up. He's, he's got um, big he's career, kind of yeah. household name. He's big like career, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and yeah, so I, I, I went to his opening here in Chinatown at, at Charlie, Charlie James, James Gallery. Yeah, it was one of the first shows I saw here in L.A. Uh, met the guy. Um, I thought he was really sincere. I thought the work was really powerful. And yeah, I, I invited him to be part of the show and. Uh, there's a story here behind. I'll, I'll tell it quickly. You know, there's that shot is of the sculpture, the the cardboard cutout, mm -hmm. and this happened a few days before the show opened. You know, Ramiro works with people that are actually in the space. So if no one's there, then there's not, nothing for him to make work about. Luckily, this one guy who washes the windows every three months came in a few days before the <laughs> opening. The gallery assistant Sumako, the gallery attendant there, the, the director, he took a photo and sent it to me. Said, hey. Maybe this will work for Ramiro. Maybe he's interested in doing something. So I shot it over. I texted it over to Ramiro, and by the opening, he had this this beautiful cardboard cut out there. Wow! As wow. part of the show. So, so it's and 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 uh, what did you? Why do you think Ramiro Gomez, specifically among the the, the many talented Latin mm -hmm. American artists in the Los Angeles and Southern California, why do you think Ramiro Gomez? What about his work has really resonated? You know, I think with Ramiro, it's um, he he taps into something very. Um, that I think a lot of us experience, a lot of us see, you know, this invisible labor, you know, um, folks waiting at a, bu at a bus stop and uh, on their way to go clean homes. And uh, I think that it's that, uh, that, you know, it's the immigrant experience that he's tapping into. But um, I've seen other artists do that. And I think with Ramiro, what's unique about Ramiro is that he's, he's also a workaholic. He's someone who every day is finding a new way to kind of tell retell these stories, you know, mm -hmm. project these, um, uh, you know, what's going on with this, this class of people in the U.S., you know. And sometimes it's, you know, he went to LACMA one day and, you know, drew, uh, drew directly over the postcards and, 
I saw those images on Facebook, and and um, I think that I see, I see him. He's able. He, there's a vernacular, and he's he's yeah. got a way of working that is. Uh, it's in touch with real people. It's consistent. It's uh, he's challenging. He's always challenging himself. He's working out in the desert, doing cardboard cut cutouts out there, and I think he's drawing attention to something that's really. Uh, well, he's, to me, he's a very political artist uh, who doesn't preach, and I think a lot of a lot of people uh, lose potential audience by the by this kind of incessant preaching, mm -hmm. as opposed to just almost living by example. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And if you talk to the guy, I mean, he's only 30, 31 years old. Wow. Um, and so far, he's he's had a lot of success lately, and, and How old are he's you? a really humble person. 31. Now, if you're a baseball player, you'd be you'd be close to retirement, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. Yeah. So, so this, and now you're you're just getting started here. This is awesome. Yeah. You know. Thanks so, for making me feel better about yeah. that. I appreciate it. Oh, here we go. Here's the real photo. Wow. Okay. There is the, That's the real photo. Yeah. So the ge this gentleman here is in, uh, and you know, Ramiro replicated also. You know, see that bucket there by mm -hmm. the window. Yeah. He also yeah. did the bucket in cardboard. So, so do you think is, um, I've seen Ramiro's success from uh, from my perspective. You know in the art world, mm -hmm. how is Ramiro's work uh, taken in and enjoyed by the audience? Mm -hmm. Well, I think he, um, he's, got a, he's got a big following, you know, and I... Th but is it just in the art uh, world? Is there a general population? No, no, no. And I think this is what, why Ramiro's work is so important. He, um, you know, he is he's tapping into something, he's tapping into a big national narrative, and a lot of people who, you know, are not going to Chinatown every other weekend for the openings, mm -hmm. Are, are tapping into his work and they're hearing his story. And Ramiro's story is very personal. You know, his his parents um, were uh, you know are in the uh, are in this workforce. You know, cleaning it's homes. Cleaning very market. relatable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah. Who, to a lot of people. Yeah. Who is Mola's audience? You know, we um, every day we we discover uh, a new constituency, a new you know pool of people that are tapping into our, the programming at the museum. Um, I think it would be very uh, narrow-minded of me to say that, well, our, our audience are, you know, L.A. Latinos, you know. Actually, MOLA's brand is kind of global. You know, I've had a lot of projects with artists all over the world. Well, you're doing a speaking, Cuban. speaking of global, what do we have here? Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> this is a photograph of, uh, on the left there is Fidel Castro, on the right is um, Che Guevara. We had an exhibition here, this was last year, uh, the of the photographer Alberto Corda who in the, uh, you know, at the start of the revolution in Cuba was uh, documenting uh, the daily lives of Fidel and Che. And, and where's Corda were. from? Uh, Cuban, Corda is Cuban. Yeah. Corda is Cuban. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he had basically access nobody in history did. He had this kind of access, you know, he's, there he is on a boat fishing with Fidel and Che. Wow. Uh, he later goes on to um, trips with Fidel to Russia, um, on these really historic trips, and you know, he's uh, he was a state photographer. He was so, volunteer, a volunteer photographer. We can call him a commie then. <laughs> <laughs> he, is he is he still alive? No, no, no. He died uh, not 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 too long ago, but uh, how, left this beautiful legacy. How do you work? Does he have an estate? Do you work with the estate? How do you do that? This is an interesting story. So somewhere we'll, there'll be a photo here of the the lender, um, Verdi Pachenik, who's actually a crime writer and a and an art collector, a really fascinating woman. She came to us with these collection, 28, 29 photographs, uh, really historic stuff. She bought the work directly from one of Corda's daughters. Oh, wow. Yes. So, so it's, it's just, it's, it's a random collection, basically. It's not, you're not working, you don't have to go to the Cuban embassy or any of that. Right, no, 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 this was, this was work that made it, uh, yeah, made it to the U.S., made it, made it into the hands made it of, state uh, made it to Miami, and that's where the work was acquired. Can, can we see the next photo? The next image. Oh, here's this is now this is the we're title the, wall. This is okay. the title wall yeah. at uh, the at MOLA. So half of my time, I'm putting up this vinyl here with my interns, and we just is that the it up is that the worst part of the job? That's my favorite. That's, that's your that's favorite. You like the vinyl? Oh, God, I can't do the vinyl. Oh, if I had to do the vinyl, I would do the vinyl. Oh, do your vinyl for you. I love it. I, 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 peeling it off the wall is just. just I like peeling so much pleasure. I like peeling it off. And you know what else are the little tiny hang cards? Because I'm always like, well, do I want to put the size on? Do I want to put the materials? Or do I just want to put title and artist? So, so, so you're you're putting up the letter. So, um. In Long Beach, uh, do you get like this is the big opening? It w was was the Che the show Cortis photography? Was this like plus or minus a bigger opening than average? Uh, okay, so so this show is in our project space, and typically it's for you know an individual artist, uh, something done on site, and it's usually a living artist. But uh, and we you know expect 150, maybe 300 folks uh, for those openings. 
there were uh, we did have a big crowd that day, and we're also. Um, you know, we got some nasty letters before the show opened. Really? Well, it's a controversial show. I mean, Chase, Chase, Chase still uh, controversial, right? Yes. I mean, there's a there's a political divide there. You know, with uh, is it mostly Cuban Americans sending the uh, letters or or? Uh, it's it's uh, people from all, all walks of life. Yeah. Really? But from these two, from the different sides of the political divide. So we did. I, I we you know I wouldn't say we we got a threat, but we got a nasty letter, a couple of nasty letters. Yeah, I mean, if you're not getting hate mail though, you're not. I mean, it, it, it would it would <laughs> in a way, but but it is still touchy subject matter. It's a touchy subject, but things are changing rapidly, and there's more yeah. and more travel to Cuba now. I mean, the museum has, has had a really close relationship. Our out, our outgoing director, Stuart Ashman, um, is Cuban, and really created some nice, beautiful partnerships with. Uh, with La Habana and you know we've been traveling three four five times a year you know taking our um, mm -hmm. oh so you you you've been you you've gone down to Cuba I've been I've been I've been there twice yeah so I've been uh, very fortunate been since to go. the normalization so I went once before kind of all the big changes mm -hmm. and then I went back um, a year and a half later for the Havana Biennial in May and I did see major changes really yes what, like what well I think the first time I went there were maybe People were free to speak. Ten or twelve Chinese buses, and now, well, um, you, you know, it's it's different. You have to really experience this on the ground in Cuba. Uh, the people are wonderful, and they're dying to tell you their history. It is such a complex uh, social, cultural, political history there. Every major power in the world has, at one point, uh, been been uh, you know in charge in Cuba. You know, you see people on the street who were. A mix of uh, you know they have that African heritage, the Hispanic heritage, uh, as well as maybe some Russian ancestry, and Asian. Yes, there is a Chinatown in Cuba. Yes. Wow. In fact, Cuba's great. One of Cuba's greatest artists, Wilfred Alam, was uh, part Chinese. Wow. Yeah, part Afro-Cuban. So interesting. It's so a fascinating is, place. This is the announcement card. Okay. Uh, I, yeah. So this is uh, this is actually a, a film cover. This is a. Uh, Court of Vision. This is the, uh, the cover of the DVD. <laughs> oh, there's, a, there's a documentary about it. There's him. a documentary, and we invited the um, uh, the filmmaker out here to yeah to present the film in conjunction. That, that that's the image of Che Guevara that Corda took. Uh, we had actually one of the original prints in the show, um, and yeah, it was just an opportunity to learn all about uh, the Cuban Revolution and how this image got to be so popular and. Um, Did yeah. anybody inadvertently show up with a Che, like hipster Che T-shirt, and not realize? Oh wow! This, I mean, <laughs> there, no, was there was there any enlightenment going on in this? I think so. There's always enlightenment with uh, learning about the history here of Che. You know, uh -huh. um, I'm sure in our cl closets we've all got a hipster Che Nike. Speak for Nike yourself. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> so so um, so you get you get some hate mail, but a uh, positive experience overall. Great a great experience, absolutely. A chance to learn about the Cuban Revolution, learn about this guy who was a volunteer photographer for the revolution. Never imagined that these works, these photographs, would be in an, in an art gallery. Did he did he ever move into the United States, or did he? Where did he end up? Uh, Corda actually ended up doing oceanography. Wow. Uh, for, uh, photography. He was he was an underwater photographer after the Cuban Revolution. Uh, he was still you know traveling the world. Um, so he was able to did travel move the to the world. U.S. And he moved to the U.S.? Yes. Wow. And where in the U.S. did he end up? Uh, I believe he, and uh, now I may be wrong about this, but I think he lived his last days in Miami. I may be wrong. Uh, no, that would be also, very, very unique. He was also in Paris. For he was also in Paris that would well. be, that'd be very unique so for a Cuban to, to end up in. fact check on that. It would be very unique for a Cuban to end up in Miami. <laughs> okay, so um, hey, can, we, can we see the next? Because I know there's a photo of you with the actual uh, letter. Oh, no, Ooh. who's this? Wow, well, we Frida, know who okay. is. Tell so, us about Frida. Well, uh, yeah, so I wanted to talk about some upcoming things. We have a, we have a beautiful collection of uh, color photography coming from the Nicholas Murray archives. Nicholas Murray was one of Frida's lovers. Uh, they had Ooh. an on and off relationship for 10 years. Wow. Overlapping with Diego. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so we're going to present. Uh, so the show is his photos? Yes, or, his or photos, letters, intimate letters between Frida and Nicholas. Oh my God. coming from the archives. So that's, as a curator, you get to read them all. Yes, oh yeah. You get, uh, do you yeah. pick the most salacious yeah. one or the most, I mean, the, the best written one? How do you, how do you pick do you the letters? Protect her reputation? Well, I think, yeah. Is there anything in there? That, is there any, go come, come on, give us, give us uh, some, some gossip here. Is there an exclusive? There's there's a lot of juicy stuff you have, but you're gonna have to come and you gotta come. Oh, 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 he's dangling the carrot. <laughs> Look, I've already told you that I failed this curating class. That's totally embarrassing. That's like, come on. That's, so so okay. So we've got uh, we've got a great photo of Frida. It's coming here. up in April of 2017. Yeah. That's a, that's a heavily. That's an, it's an is iconic that a image. Or, or uh, what, what, what? 
with it. So yeah, it, the color is as rich as that Kodachrome, wow. you know, uh, slide. Wow, you know, great, uh, great. But it's, uh, that's uh, yeah, amazing. the color photograph, Nicholas Murray, this year is from. Uh, and, and now how do you organize that? I mean, that's, that seems like a complex. Well, we're actually putting this in conjunction with guest curator. Um, they organize traveling exhibitions. So they originally hooked up the arrangement with Nicholas, with the archives to get the show on the road. Oh, great, okay. And we, yeah, I thought that MOLA would be a perfect place for perfect. this. You know, we, we did a, um, Frida Kahlo photography show two years ago, uh -huh. but it was black and white, and these were images from the Casa Azul, so from her personal archives. Yeah, uh, and we had we had six different sections, and one of the sections was on lovers, and Nicholas Murray was a piece of that. He was a part of that. Okay. So this is a nice way to kind of revisit her love life, revisit the people in her in her milieu, and I heard a story. Focus in on it. I heard a story. Maybe you, maybe you know about this. There are no photos of Frida's teeth. She actually it's fascinating. Had, she had pretty messed. She had pretty messed up teeth, and she she, made, she always made sure to go like that. So, so. I th I've always thought, okay, there are very few or no photos of her smiling. You know, ah. So that's one. But the teeth, I did, it's that's, a, it's I she had. A, she had a, apparently she had a, something with her teeth. Okay, <laughs> so let's let's see the next. Uh, photo what else do we here. have here? Dreamland, a Frank Dreamland. Romero. Wow. Okay. This is so exciting. So I'm really excited. I mean, I have to. I'm gonna have to jet out of here and continue working on. The, we're working on the show right now. We've got an exhibition catalog, an exhibition documentary wow. of uh, Frank Romero. You know, one of LA's own. Uh, he's 70 plus years old, and uh, I'm really excited. He's, he's going to see this retrospective. Um, you know, while he's still throwing fastballs. You know, he's uh, he is. He's got a studio in, in Lincoln Park. Lincoln Heights, and you know, back there you see behind him is that 101 mm -hmm. mural. That was the for the, uh, was Olympics. that for the 84 Olympics, or was that before, Olympics. oh, it was before, okay, it was yes. 84, okay, great, for, great. It was commissioned for the 84 Olympics. We're gonna have over 120 works, uh, bringing in work from uh, the Smithsonian, from LACMA. Uh, he has work all over the place. Uh, a lot of private collections here in California. Well established, the well collected. Uh, right. Chicano, do you consider Chicano, yes, Chicano I mean, he's okay. one of those four. He's one of the first mm -hmm. four. Uh, Chicano artist to be part of uh, this major show at LACMA back in 74 that uh, right. really w yep. was the first mainstream Chicano Are show. You, is this, uh, now, is this kind of maybe, is this, I want to say, response or, or collaboration with, there's going to be an Almirage show at uh, LACMA, right? Yeah. Well, so we had a fundraiser last weekend at Cheech Marin's home, and I mentioned, you know, this is the year of Los Four. Wow. You know, this is the year, and Cheech said, yes, this is the year of Los Four. You've got... Uh, different projects happening through different museums, different initiatives, uh, but we're first out the gate with a Frank Romero a retrospective. When does this, this open? Part of, opens February 2017. February of 2017, and this is a Frank Romero. Yes, and that's Cheech's. Well, that's one of Cheech's Frank Romero's. That is Arrest of the Paleteros. Uh, you see here. Oh, what a yeah. Uh, it's I, that's a really like the, powerful image. When you're written, man, the, the, with, if I don't get my paletas, uh, I don't. I, don't <laughs> I used to live across the street from where they all would show up in the morning and, yeah. and they, would, they would all get on the little trucks and go, go around and you'd hear those bells, you know, imagine like 40 yeah, sets of yeah. bells going off. I mean, it's, oh, it's you like know. like magical, you know, and they're part of the landscape and I mean, how, how ridiculous is it? Here they are getting What year being is arrested. this? you know what year this painting is? Uh, this is a, a painting from the 90s. Wow. In the 90s, Frank, someone had told Frank, hey, you know, you're not, you're not making any political art and he was a little offended by it. And this, a friend of his had told him that. And so he, um, he went on to make some really powerful paintings, you know, looking back at, at moments like this, of this, you know, this arrest happening in the park. Mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have also uh, Death of Ruben Salazar, which is, it's a painting, you know, made, I think, over 15, 20 years. Well, that, that might be his most famous painting. Yeah. Yes, that's, then, that's at the Smithsonian, and we're in the process of getting that over here to the, how do to you, the show. How do you borrow a painting? Is there, is there some, like, do you have to, like, do you have to, like, is it, like, James Bond stuff? <laughs> No, it's really, it's really, you know, it's it's a letter that gets faxed over, and it's a phone call, and then. But do, is it like a maybe a baseball trade? Do you have to send them one of yours <laughs> for one of theirs? You know, no. we're, we're going to send you a Frank Romero and 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 uh, and a Carlos Almaraz to be named later, or or how do you do that? I like that. No, I like that though. <laughs> Um, that'd be fun if it worked like that. No, it's you know, if you know, this is a big retrospective. This is Frank's. Um, I mean, there may be others, but this is the first one, and, and we're trying to get the most important work together. So, uh, you know, will there with, be a book published? Yes, we are producing a catalog. We're working on the catalog. catalog. Oh wow! Okay, great. Uh, yeah. Well, let, let's see. Cover, let's see. Cover. We got, we got when, some more when images. Does that open? February, February of 2017. Yeah. Okay. Let's thanks. let's let's see uh, the next image. One more. Woo! Here we go, and it is. Boom! 
boom! Ah, I thought I could Maybe. time it, but I couldn't. <laughs> <laughs> we're stuck in the. Tr we're, we're 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 you know, that not is, the worst place to be. Not no. the worst place to be. Well, um, let let me let me uh, ask you. What else is the biggest deal coming up? You got the Frank Romero retrospective up, but but where does MOLA fit in in the LA landscape? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Well, I think we I think we have a new place in the LA landscape. And just about two years ago, we opened up to Chicano Latino Art, mm -hmm. uh, which is allowing us to tap into a lot of talent here in LA. You know, we had a film presentation a couple months ago by Rodrigo Debre, who's doing really amazing stuff. He's got this film called Dark Progressivism. Um, looking at LA street artists that you know tapping into the Chicano movement tapping into um, you know that uh, Mexican American Chicano Latino history in the city so I think that's and that's what I think the Franco Romero project um, is another piece of that story that we're just starting to tell um, you know at the same time we uh, you know we're a place for this Frida Kahlo show to kind of you know to land and also you know, in September of 2017, we our Getty Pacific Standard Time project. Mm -hmm. Oh, what's that? Is uh, it's focusing on the Caribbean, so contemporary art of the Caribbean. It's a show called Relational Undercurrents. Over, we're working on the show right now, and, and that show is actually in great shape. We've got over 80, 80 plus loans. A lot of it coming from the Caribbean, Miami, New York, and so that's an opportunity to learn about a lot of new artists, learn about what's going on down in the Caribbean. Um, you know, not just Cuba, Dominican Republic, but also um, you know some new new you know, some new places That's out there so in the Caribbean. Exciting. Yeah. Well, I got some good news for you. The Dodgers are up one to nothing in the top of the second. All Adrian right. Gonzalez oh, hit a home wow. run to left center field. Awesome, so. awesome. I have to say about Gonzalez, he got the accent on the on his last name, on the jersey. Oh, yeah, yeah, he I fought mean, MLB you know, to, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. So, so I think that's, that a, that's yeah, really cool, That's a big Adrian. step ahead. That's so, huge. okay, great. So, Thanks for um, the update. hey, uh, Edward Hayes, it's been a pleasure having you on. Um, I'm looking forward, as, as a person who lives in Southern California, I'm looking forward to MOLA being you know, a, an essential part of the art fabric in LA and uh, maybe see you down there sometime soon. Okay, okay man, thanks so, so much. Right, take care. See you in Chinatown. Thank you All right. so much. <laughs> Thank you. Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Next right. up. Next up. Right. Next up, we have probably the best, well, I don't know if she's the best known, but. She's the, maybe the longest serving resident of the brewery, still producing quality art. The Brewery Art Colony in Lincoln Heights has had many famous artists. One artist has been there almost from the beginning, and as the next uh, chapter of their open studios is about to open, uh, we thought it was very important to bring on uh, a great painter in her own right, but certainly a, a mainstay at the most important art colony in the history of Southern California, if not, if the, not the United States, Winnie Brewer. Winnie Brewer. Winnie. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Welcome, welcome, welcome. How you doing? Welcome to Modern Art Blitz. Hey, Winnie. <laughs> Wow, so you are on your 32nd brewery art show this year. Yes. Your 32nd year or your 32nd? 32nd year. The 32nd year, you do, sometimes you do two a year. Yeah. Wow. wow. Yes. Now, it used to only be once a year, now it's twice a year. Now it's when is the brewery art walk this, this year, the 2016 fall next, edition? It's next weekend. What are the it's dates? It's coming October weekend, the 22nd and 23rd. Oh, okay. Saturday, Sunday. 2016. If you're watching in the future, sorry, we're still stuck <laughs> yes, here in 2016. 2016. Trump might be president. Right, <laughs> but the brewery will always have art shows. So, so tell us, uh, so uh, you are primarily a painter. Yes. It, is that the only art you ever explored? No, I, I, originally I wanted to be a writer. Really? Yes. And then I wanted to be a photographer. Oh, wow. But I wanted to be a photographer because I thought I couldn't draw and paint. Oh? Who but told you that? Me. Oh, no. Ah, <laughs> but uh, and so it, it was really a curse, not knowing what I wanted to be when I grew up. I really, it, it was crazy making. And finally, at the age of 50, I decided, well, I'll be a painter. Wow. And I gave myself a 10-year plan. Wow. Because um, I thought that's about how long it would take. A lot of people at 50 are starting to wind down, and you're and, just like, you're actually structuring <laughs> out. I'm, I'm, but, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. but at the end of 10 years, I realized, oh, you know, uh, painting's really hard. <laughs> <laughs> so, but you've stuck I, at it. Why was I so surprised? I was really naive about it. And I, and I thought, okay, another 10 years. So, that, you know, it was a 20-year plan. Now it's a 30-year plan. Wow. 
So I think it never ends. I, I, I think you work really hard and you get better, but you're never satisfied. How do you feel as um, basically older and as a woman, is, there, is the art world stacked against you or do you give a shit? I, I guess I don't really give a shit. Um, I, I've never really felt discrimination as a woman. I, I don't know, maybe I've just been lucky, maybe I haven't been conscious enough, but I, I, I've really just had the belief that if you really work hard and you do good work, it'll be rewarded. And so tell and us the about- reward, And the reward is more- You're covering your mic. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, What's the reward? And, and rewarding myself is, is more important than getting Accolades. rewards from everybody Let, let's else. Let's look at this image. Uh, this is, is this a recent painting? This is recent. Um, this was, um, I showed this in San Diego at the Art Institute. Is it a painting on panel? It's canvas, which is unusual for me. And it's four feet by four feet. Oh, that's very large for you, right? That's, that's gigantic. That might be your me. biggest painting but ever. But if you notice, it's I, sectional. It's sectioned off, and that's a little trick that I've done. If 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 I'm overwhelmed by the the size of the canvas, I'll just divide it all up. <laughs> so, um, but I like this piece a lot. Um, is it, I, are there narrative elements here, or are we just going for abstraction? Um, there, well, first of all, there's a lot of layers, which appeals to me. I like pattern. I like layers. Um, I, I try to not think about, I didn't know what this painting was going to look like before I started. And, and I don't want to know. I want it to be a surprise. It's sort of a gift to me. Um, and are you, are you your audience then? I'm my audience. You are your audience. So when yes. you're happy with the artwork, is, is that's the most important thing? Yes. Wow. And it's, but it's very hard to make myself happy. But you have collectors. You have steady collectors. Yes. You've, you show regularly. You've shown in various places over southern so obviously what's pleasing to you also pleases an audience i mean you've, you've shown yeah it doesn't please everybody but um i think to please to please an audience you have to be very honest and if i am honest with myself and that can be very painful you know honesty sometimes doesn't feel good <laughs> but if if I am very honest in the painting other people see that they recognize that the authenticity and then they connect with it mm -hmm. um, I really believe in that collective unconscious business and that's what I'm trying to reach and then and then there's there's meanings and symbols that we share with each other well, I've seen a lot of your work and I had the pleasure of curating two shows with you and for me I think there's an element of the American woman surrealist in your artwork. I see some Lenora Carrington, I see some Helen Lunderberg, you may not. I but love in some all, of her I love earlier all this. work I definitely see that. And you have a book out now with your birds. Yes I do. Which is, a, which is some <laughs> of your more narrative symbolist. Birds. <laughs> and that'll be available at That's the brewery. That's going to be at the Art Walk. Now, can I yes. buy this online? Yes, you can buy it online at, for, through Blurb. Wow. Birds um. by Winnie Brewer. Now, <laughs> now tell me, are, are birds, um, were you influenced by other artists' paintings of birds as you got into this as subject matter, or have they always been there naturally? They, they weren't. I, I never choose subject matter. It just appears. And um, when I did start painting, that was one of the first subjects that came up. And I relate it to a childhood in Connecticut that, that birds are just, they're very important to me at a very, you know, personal childhood. <laughs> but you also did bees, so you've got I bees, bees and birds. Also, so this is yeah. this little, like, it's, there's a it's very sexy punny, well, to me, it's a, <laughs> like a sexy punny. And there is a, a whimsical eroticism to your work. Yeah, uh, birds and bees. It's it's a Connecticut 
childhood. Um, well, do you consider yourself a surrealist? Um, I, I, yeah, I think that there, that's part, part of what I do, and I like surrealism. Do you, do you um, how do I say this? It's, it's conve the, there's a, a movement called lowbrow that they call pop surrealism. I don't see any pop no. imagery no. here. What, I guess sometimes when you're putting birds in your painting, we can ask about what's in there. What are the things that you don't put in? Are there things you know, I'm never gonna put this in my painting? Or is it all, are you just working on such an unconscious level that it, it might pop up? Well, I don't have any, any rules. Um, it, when I, when I, I'm, I'm just totally into process. And when I go into the studio, the, the rule is I try to, if, if it pops into my head that I'm going to paint something pink, then I, I must use pink. That's the first thing that I thought of. And then if, if, the next thing is, okay, I'm gonna do a pink elephant. It's, and then I think, oh, I don't really wanna paint an elephant. It's sorry, that's what you thought about. You have to paint a pink elephant. Wow, <laughs> is this much of a struggle? Yes. Oh, really? <laughs> yes and no. So you're basically fighting with yourself most of the time. Oh yeah, it's, it's, it's about, and when I say my paintings are layers, um, they're also a battlefield. Wow. I think, and, and, and I see, I think everybody's art is, is autobiographical. And, and when I look at my, my paintings and I see all the layers and the battle, it's like, yeah, that's autobiographical. <laughs> is there ever points where you've had a painting that was maybe a little too open and too vulnerable and you just said, screw it, I gotta erase this, even though it's a good painting because I'm a little um, too vulnerable here? Not exactly that, but I've had a couple of paintings that I've absolutely hated, and they've ended up being purchased. And the collectors, they love these paintings. And I can look at it and see that technically there's nothing wrong with it. It's, it's a perfectly okay, it's made okay, but I hate it. And I think that the reason is that the painting has something to tell me that I don't want to hear. Ooh, ooh. Um, so it's a little, again, <laughs> we're all talking about, you're, you're making art that has this, these vulnerable self-portraits. Art, art, art gives me messages. And I remember one time you wrote about my work and oh, yeah. you and you I don't remember what I wrote you but said I remember something it. about how happy it was and I was really upset with you I thought oh he didn't get my work at all and and no I it's full of angst it's it's whatever and then I realized that I had become happy without knowing it you still want you but still, my art knew I was happy your art knew you were happier yeah. than you knew you were happy. the art knew I was happy and I hadn't gotten that message but, yet but, but Matt told me not, I was nice save you I, for, right, for a minute there I was thinking oh great I'm an idiot okay great no, okay, no, so. no, but it's that's one of the reasons you're so good at what you do let's let's, let's move uh, let's move to the next image here wow what's now how old is this painting a couple of years wow oh I recognize uh, that, that to me is Emily Dickinson. I, she's a great influence on me. Like oh, really? Frozen Rose? You want, when, oh. you, when you pass away, you want everyone to just burn everything you ever made? Wasn't that her, wasn't that her <laughs> missive that they ignored? I don't know. Help me out here. So what's the title of this, do you know? I'm sorry? Do you remember the title of this artwork? Um, yeah, I can't pronounce it, though. You can't pronounce it? <laughs> can you spell it? Is it like Beetlejuice and I something's going to appear here? I can spell it. It's, it's that word for many layers, pop. P-A-L. Palimpsest. Something like that. All right. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, <laughs> it's sort of a trite title. So tell <laughs> us about your studio. You live in the desert. The high desert. Oh, I'm all over the place. But your studio is in downtown LA in Lincoln Heights at the Brewery Art Colony. I, I paint, I have, have painted, do paint both places. Oh, yeah. okay, so you work, you work I, in- I get burned out. I, I can take just so much of LA and then I go out to the desert and I can take just so much of the desert and I have to come back to You have to LA. come back to the civilization. So, so you have been at the brewery, associated with the brewery now for 
for many years. Right. You're one of the original tenants, would you say? Yeah, uh, we moved there in 19, uh, 1932, uh, 32 years ago, 1984. 1984, that's just and the they, time it was getting kind of I settled. I think 1982 they opened. Okay, maybe. so, so um, now the brewery is an interesting place. I lived there. Um, Lisa, you've been there plenty of yeah. times. There's a I lot going on there. To it, yeah. So, so tell us, you do the brewery art walk at, is it still the preeminent studio tour, studio, open studio event in Los Angeles? There's a lot now. It used to be the only one. Yeah, we, when, way back when, we were it. There was, we had a, there big, weren't a, lot of these a big chunk of that pie. I think we're still very special because it's, we live there too. Uh huh. I think that makes makes a difference, maybe. Now, do you? It's not you, going to galleries. You're actually going to the studio. You've done a lot of art walks uh, in your time. What is the art walk audience like now, and is it different than art walks past? Yes, it is different now. I I think we were taken more seriously by art professionals. Really? Back in the beginning. Oh, back in the beginning, really? Yeah. Do you think that's and just now, a thing of their now just... We're, now our appeal, it's, we have a broader appeal now. We appeal to, to um, people that aren't necessarily that interested in art, but they want a, a nice Sunday afternoon art. Uh, a Sunday afternoon. Yeah. It's kind of like a, it's kind of like the first internet date. Let's go to the brewery <laughs> art walk. It's free at least. You don't have to buy tickets. Is it now? Now you would prefer the but, art professionals, I assume. Yeah, but it's also pretty nice. It's pretty nice to meet people that they're not that interested in art, but um, wow, and and. <laughs> no, it, I mean, you still you still well, meet them. Do they buy art? Well, sometimes they do, but but I I also like to it, when the children visit. You know that. Really? Why? I, personally, I hate children, so I'm curious well, to what you say. I, I guess I'm not a big fan of kids either, but I love the kids. I think more than anybody else that comes to the brewery because their eyes get really big. They're seeing things they've never seen before. I mean, can you imagine what it must be like to be five years old and go to the brewery and see the way these artists are living and the, the colorful, unusual, not like yeah. at home. So, and, and the art is also crazy. You're, you're in the consciousness expanding business, so to speak. Yeah, that's so, one way to so, say it. Okay, so let's, let's get down and dirty about the brewery for a minute. <laughs> Who was the best neighbor you ever had? And remember, I did live there. Oh dear, the best <laughs> neighbor I ever had. Who? I think Frank and Kirsten West. Frank and Kirsten. Oh man, let's hear it. They lived right next door to us. Okay. And sometimes we got leftover good food from their Cafe Berlin. Cafe Berlin. This is you're going way back now. And they cat sit. They would sit, cats you, you had your own cats and they would take care of your cats yes. while you were gone? Oh, wow. that, that, that goes a long way. And they were quiet. And your cat never bit them or put them in the hospital? No. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> There's a lot of that going around now. So, so, um, so, and okay, then of course we have to ask, who is the worst uh, neighbor? What artist? Is there a famous I'm artist not, that you're just sick of? Are you not going to go there? Saying. You're not going to go there? You're, are, are you wait, we're waiting for your book? Well, there, yeah, there's too many to pick from, right? <laughs> there's actually... Yeah, there's... <laughs> you know, one of the things I noticed living in an art colony, and it looks great when you go on the studio tour, these, wow, these wild people, but there's a lot of, um, I think to be an artist, there has to be a certain um, self, self-centeredness, and maybe it, maybe it oozes into narcissism, mm -hmm. and maybe it oozes into egomania, and, and maybe you, you have to be the neighbor of that person, and you're <laughs> maybe not as egomaniacal as them, but then it turns out you actually are. But I mean, a lot of that, does that a lot of that go on? Maybe I'm that neighbor and just don't maybe, know maybe, it. Yeah, that's what I always felt is the people, they're like, you're such a narcissist. It's like, no, actually, you know what? I, I've been There's looking at you there. thinking you're the narcissist. Yeah, exactly. So, so, so is that, uh, is that a part of the, is that, like pretty much what you have to put up with to live at the art colony. Um, Is that why you have to go to the desert every couple of days? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> yeah. I know there's a lot of concern at the brewery about dog shit and parking spaces. Dog shit and parking spaces. Yeah, that's a, it's a that, microcosm you know, of the that, city. That sounds like a great name for a museum <laughs> retrospective. Of, of <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, so, uh, so tell us about this painting. Oh, I love this painting. Um, <laughs> 
another another um, theme, I guess you'd call it, that appeals to me is the night sky and stars and the universe and planets. And I mean, this can go back to childhood too, the, the beautiful night skies and, but what and I, seeing the constellations. What I like here is you're not, trying to, you're not trying to like do some kind of regurgitative painting that we've all seen. Photographs do such a great job of capturing stars <laughs> in the sky. You're, you're really abstracting it here and, and bringing in more psychological narrative, would you say? I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Also, I don't want to paint something that's already been right. painted, but, um, a, but <laughs> I was going to say there's a contrast between the stars in the city and the stars in the desert. And where you live, you can see so many more. But you've yeah. mentioned before there's light pollution that's coming in, yeah. and kind of like the Great Barrier Reef is. Is it? Being wait, it's 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 the light pollution is actually getting out into the desert now. Oh right, yes. You can tell the difference yes. over the last couple of years. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Wow. Yes. And so you were in Connecticut. When did you end up in the desert? Was this like some kind of prophetic uh, well, I journey? I ended up in California in 1980. And How did that happen? A man. Oh, <laughs> it's always a man. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I, had only gonna, I was only going to stay a couple of years. All but, the blame, yeah. none of the credit. <laughs> a man. Um, <laughs> where were we? Um, so you ended, up, you ended up in the desert. About 18 years Did you just ago. get kicked out of the car at some point? Get out! And then you were, there <laughs> no, you were. No, 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 no. <laughs> There's a whole, Winnie came to Los Angeles. She went to art school and there she met her husband. Well, I actually, I, I met Bill when I was a photographer. Mm -hmm. ah. We met at photo school. Okay. In the mounting room. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this is a family show, miss. Excuse me, miss. We have standards here, standards of decency. And did it live up to its name? Oh, well, they're still married. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so uh, tell us about what you got. Now, Ooh, you said you like beautiful. patterning, and I'm looking at this. It's got, it, it reminds me a bit of quilting, and, and what's going on here? I don't, I, good question. I, I, to me, this is very New England and very Emily Dickinson. And there are so many layers on this, I've lost count. It's been like a dozen different paintings, and I, I just, at some point, I may add more, I don't know. <laughs> at some point, do you just stop, or do you ever take a work from five years ago and go, you know what that needs is another bird? I, I probably never stop. Until you sell it. Until I sell it, and I've sold some that weren't done. But you know, uh -oh. one thing that's really interesting about your work is not only you use, you use stenciling, you use yeah. collage and you use painting. So it's, it's a mixed media and your use of stenciling. I wish somebody would give you a mural in LA. I think having <laughs> a Winnie Brewer mural in that LA would be, would be really freaking big. <laughs> awesome. You could just sit on the ground and sip something and, and tell people where, like, oh. look at that there. Maybe you need to put a manager on it. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, um, so hey, do we have another uh, another? Pay Ooh, wow! Ooh, what do we got here? There's a bee. There's some more bees. So we've had the birds. I, now we have the bees. Yeah. Um, you uh, know, I. I how did old a were show. you? How old were you when you got the lecture? <laughs> Let's cut to the chase. How old were you when you got the birds and the bees lecture? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think no, I ever got. You it. never got it. <laughs> I never got oh. it. <laughs> On the job training. Okay. But yeah, at the mounting <laughs> tell, room. Tell us what show was this in? Um, well, actually, I did a bee show at UCLA a couple of years back, and I've kind of become the bee lady. Because um, I really, I, you can see the socks, uh -huh. the bee socks, but I, I care about, you know, what's happening with the bees. And I've been asked to do some bee paintings for a show in March of 2017. Wow. So this is one I've been experimenting with, and it, it's many layers, um, as like I've been doing, and it's collage and stencil. And do, you, do you have a website? I do have a website. What is your website? Uh, WinnieBrewer.com. W-I-N-I-B-R-E-W-E-R. -E WinnieBrewer.com. And so, <laughs> and and your book, Birds, Winnie Brewer, is this on Amazon? Where do we where do we get that this online? This is on, on Blurb. On Blurb. Or you can, they can get it through the website. Through, or, through. Your, or at your open studio. Now, at the my open studio we, at the brewery. The brewery open studio is October 22nd, 23rd. Yes. 2016. Uh, 11 a.m. to 6 p.m., right? Yes. Help me out here. I, those are the old hours back, yeah. back when I lived at the brewery. Yes, come yeah. early Free for come a early. parking it's, it's, space. It's, and and uh, do donated by UPS still. Does UPS? Yes, UPS parking. The big UPS facility in L.A. And very lots, of, lots of other artists, like 
not just yourself. Over big name artists, artists. Big name artists. Small name artists. That, that's right. Medium name Food artists. Food trucks and Barbara's at the brewery. Barbara's at the brewery, and, delicious and food. And a beer garden, I understand. And a beer garden. A beer garden. Is, okay. Well, it's, a, I mean, it's a great day. Um, it's a great now, day. Now, uh, when you are finished with the brewery art walk, do you just have to get away from the brewery, or does it make you want to be immersed more in the whole thing? Um, the Monday after the art walk, I'm going to be back in my studio painting. In the I, desert? In the desert, I'm going to paint for this show in March. Oh, okay. So you have a, you have a real <laughs> schedule. You're not just one of these, huh, whatever the mood strikes. You actually, you're on the ball now. Yeah. All right. Well, Winnie Brewer, thank you very much for joining us on, on Modern Art Blitz. And I was just told we have to wrap this episode up. We do. Our 40th episode is in the can. We do this every Sunday at 5 p.m. live on dronebox.com. We're archived on Facebook video and also youtube.com. That's a website. And modernartblitz.com. Modernartblitz.com has a full archive of now all 40 of our episodes. My co-host S, Lisa Derrick. My uh, guests, Edward Hayes and Winnie Brewer. My name is Matt Gleason. Thank you very much for joining us. Bye. <laughs>